Well, hello. I want to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This week I have quite a wide range of pens, uh, in part because of a review, in part because of some thank you letters, and in part because of a wonderful purchase. So let's dive into these pens. So videos like this where I look at fountain pens, both new and vintage, and inks and paper interest you, please subscribe below. Uh, if you would like to comment on any of the pens, and especially if you have any information on the ISCO pens presented here, please comment about that as well. So let's take a look at the pens I'm using this week. From left to right, this is an ISCO. Uh, that's an interesting pen. I have heard I'm not ready to share what I know about it because I don't know that I know it. That made no sense, but yeah. This is also an ISCO. <laughs> this is a Cora, which you have seen its review already this week. This is a, the Aurora 88, which was my thank you letter pen. Do you like? This is my Super Rotax. This here is my P Pobita 63, a Bulgarian pen. I think, or Soviet, it's a little unclear. From the source, I'm still researching this one. Uh, this one here, I'm sorry, I have to look here. This is a Yaroslavl, which is a city sort of in the neighborhood of Moscow. Uh, it's a pen from the 1980s anyway. This is a Soyuz AP, which is a, it was marketed to me anyway as a luxury fountain pen. And of course, a Waterman waterman hemisphere and i will just add because it's been my daily writer this these past two weeks i even re-inked it for some reason caveco v14 s so i will put that sort of awkwardly here because i would like to talk about these two pens first as always i'll be writing my bomo art journal i finally have a review up of this beautiful notebook so some time back, I, I was mentioned that I am suddenly unclear about my Central Pen 100820. I had a suggestion that it might actually be made by a brand named ISCO, which the word ISCO on its nib was kind of a suggestion in that direction. Uh, I've had some suggestions about the nationality of ISCO. Uh, I'm leaning toward it being Yugoslavia, which of course is a country that no longer exists. But I don't know that, so uh, take that with a humongous, humongous grain of salt. That said, learning that it might be not a central pen made me curious, so I got to looking for ISCO brand pens, and I found two, and I decided to purchase them. Now, I don't have models for these pens. Uh, this first one is a fairly plain black pen. Yeah, it's piston filler. Uh, it doesn't share a lot of sim similarities what I've, with what I've been calling my Centro pen, except for one, which is hard to make out because it's full of ink, but there's a rather generous ink window, which is quite similar. Uh, I wish I'd brought that down for this video, but I didn't, so we'll go with this. The nib on this pen says ISCO, 14 karat. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read it through the screen. 585... And then there's an LL, which, if anybody can fill me in on what that means, I would love to hear from you. The feed looks remarkably like that central pen. In fact, this nib is the more similar of the two to the central pen. But I don't have a model number. It's also not as flexible and amazing as that one, although it is pretty sweet, I have to say. Uh, the ink in here is the fairly common pilot black just the plain ordinary for reasons and i just think that has a rather remarkable amount of flexibility despite not being quite like the central pen that i like so much now the really impressive pen is this doodad i mean check out that chatoyancy this is also an isco uh, it was sold as a red tortoise pen. Let's get a little bit of a close-up on this. I'll have to work out how to show you this better when we do the, when I do the actual review, but 
I mean, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> it has a blind cap covering up a piston turning knob, which is very similar to my Centro pen. Uh, the finial is very similar to my Centro pen. That is not. Just admire that again. That's so pretty. And then we'll check out the nib here. This nib is not as amazing. Uh, it definitely has a sweet spot. Some flexibility, but not a lot. Isco, 14 karat, 585. And I can't make out if there's any letters below that. And I just inked myself. So, we'll call this, just to differentiate it, we'll call it the Isco Red Tortoise, since I don't currently have model numbers. This is Pelican 4001 Brilliant Black. which may seem like kind of a boring choice for such a pretty pen. But uh, I don't know the history of these. I decided to play it safe with some leftover samples from my uh, journey into black inks and uh, just use them up. So that's how I ended up with black ink in these pens. Uh, to round off this whole black theme, I guess I do have another black coming. This is a Caveco V14S, which has been my daily writer. I will say I've modified my opinion somewhat using it as a daily writer. It's not a good friend with this ink. Oops. It works, but I've been more impressed with this pen with other inks, if that makes sense. This is Kyonuto Nore Bairo. Still a very nice pen that I like very much. My review this week, of course, was this Dutch Cora pen, which is apparently made in Germany. The ink is running low. Uh, the ink in this pen, of course, is Robert Oster. I have to say my ink traces so far are looking rather grim. It must be that whole winter thing is finally getting to me. But then we get to my thank you card letter. We did a, <clears throat> well, this, uh, this past weekend, uh, the day after our, my last pens and use section, we had a local invitational science Olympiad, which my school put on. And that meant my co coach and I basically ran the whole thing and we had to find judges we had to set everything up we had to tear everything down plus manage kids and uh let's just say it's a happy day it's over with and I am very 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 grateful to, to all the judges who helped with that thing because it just wouldn't have gone without them so writing some thank you letters going to include a small thank you in as well but this is my Aurora 88 I have had a, a mention or two in some letters and comments. Just curious about the flex nib that's on this guy. Uh, obviously, this vintage Caveco puts it to shame. I'd say even this vintage Isco puts it to shame. But I think it still does a very nice job. And this is Robert Oster. River of Fire. Why did I pick this particular ink for uh, thank yous? I really couldn't tell you, but I did. I guess I was kind of hoping there'd be a wee bit of sheen on that. I don't know. Then we get to my delight, which is a delight. Ha ha ha. 
I had this out last week. I don't quite understand the name, but I will say, gosh, what a pretty finish on this guy. So this is a Delike Smurfs. Oops, you can't see that. Delike Smurfs, whatever that means. And the nib is an extra fine bent nib, is what they called it on the source where I bought it. Sort of like a Fude nib, or uh, somebody mentioned after they saw it on my channel, a Waverly nib from Pilot. I've never used a Waverly nib, so I can't say intelligent things about that. I can intelligently say that the ink is Deatramentis, whoops, M-E-N-T-I-S, Red Roses. A uh, interesting scented ink, and kind of an attractive, kind of off-red, if that makes sense. <clears throat> I used it to correct a little student work this week, just because it's kind of different. I collect, corrected a lot of student work this week, some, well, tests from f four different classes, with my Super Rotax, a 1970s fountain pen. Don't look for flex with this puppy. I have a fine nib on this pen, and the ink is the interesting Noodler's Dragon's Napalm. My uh, three Soviet pens are still in use, but I, I have gone a few days not using them because I'm just curious to see how they handle that. So this is my Pobita 63. Oh, starts like a champ. This is the one I was most worried about, actually. So the full name on this puppy was a Pobita 63, but then where it's sold, it was also, these words were included, Pelican. Interesting. <laughs> Version Bulgarian. Does that mean it was made in Bulgaria? I do not know. Although, I think that would be kind of cool if it was because of my interest in these Central European pens. Uh, the ink in it, mostly because of the piston I wanted to help lubricate, and it's a kind of a cleaning ink, is Noodler's Rattler Eel Red. Or, yeah, Rattler Eel Red, or Rattler Red Eel, I can't remember. Ah, who cares? So that's impressive. I mean, it's, the nib still isn't that great. Uh, I had a commenter last week point out that the nib was originally probably plated in gold. Clearly a steel nib, but you know, they were trying back then. Even sent me a link that showed that to be the case. And there's the... Which turned out, I can't really see it on my camcorder screen. I'm having trouble in this lighting downstairs. But I thought it showed up very well in the video last week. So hopefully it shows up as well this week. Beside it, I have a Yaroslavl, which is named for a city near Moscow. And this pen was marketed as having been sold in the 1980s. Okay, and this one I did not expect to have any trouble. So, we'll see... I know some people will tap their pen. I may do that a little if I get super desperate, but I don't like to. Yeah, I'm super desperate. Because uh, I don't want to bend anything. But yeah, somebody clearly doesn't want to write. So let me give a little encouragement. I see a little ink leaking around this converter or piston or whatever it is. While we're here, let's admire this hooded nib. Oh, there we go. So, 
Now, let's see if this fellow wants to write. If not, we'll pass on and do bigger and better things. I feel like it's possible the tines are not aligned. You know, just looking at naked eye only. Oh, yeah, in the screen there, it definitely looks like they're not aligned. I'll have to study it more closely, but that may be something I need to fix. Or it could be just a trick of the light, because this is well lit for some things down here, but not others. So I'll study this footage. I'm not going to say right now if that if I think that's well, well uh, aligned or not. Oh, there we go. This, that is actually a uh, thing I've seen with some of these Soviet pens, is they do sometimes have trouble writing if they sit for too long. Uh, I won't say that they're all particularly well made. I will say in this one's defense, it's not scratchy at all. It's actually fairly smooth. You know, decent writer, not amazing. So uh, I just might have to study that. I also got a lot of purple out of that when I cleaned it. My other one is a Soyuz AP, which I believe may have, and because it was marketed as such on uh, Etsy where I bought it, may have been a uh, higher class pen. This is a Yar oh, I'm sorry, a Soyuz AP. When I review all these, I will have to talk about what words like Soyuz and Pobita mean. Somewhat flexible, although I believe it's a steel nib. The ink in it is Monteverde Turquoise. I don't know if Monteverde still makes this formulation. I know they changed a number of their inks. This is their original formulation of turquoise. I wanted to use it because it was a lubricating ink and I thought it would help things move more smoothly in that pen. And then my final pen, which is inked this week, a Waterman Hemisphere. Plain, not terribly exciting, slim, pe slim pen. Oops. All right, so Noodler's Bay State Blue. And I'll just point out, because I find this interesting, and a viewer pointed this out to me. A lot There is feathering with the Bay State Blue. None of these other inks are feathering, although I'm going to blame, actually, the pen a little bit for the Mont Blanc. Uh, Super Rotax, do you like? That's wet, wet. Wet, I don't know, they're not terribly wet. Wet-ish. But I found it interesting that the pilot black bled on the very first sample. For whatever that's worth, I don't know. So those are the pens I have in use this week. Uh, if you know anything about Isco, I would sure love to hear from you. Uh, if, you if you know anything about Cora, even though the review is already published, I'd love to hear about that too. I'm... Uh, Kind of excited, though, that I finally got that review done. So uh, if videos like this where I talk about fountain pens, both vintage and new, uh, especially more obscure fountain pens interest you, please subscribe. If you have any comments about ISCO or any of the other pens shown in this video today, please feel free to comment below. And I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.